Hello again everybody, this is John with BestPriceNutrition.com. Today I'm going to go through protein with you guys and discuss and how to help you choose choosing the right protein for you. Um, specifically talk about protein, we can't understate the importance of protein. You know, whether you're an athlete or just an everyday person trying to stay fit, you have to have protein. Protein is essential for life. When you look at somebody, most of what you're seeing is protein. Their hair is keratin, their skin is you know, some collagen, you, know, you have muscles which are actin and myosin. So your body takes the protein that we ingest from our diet and makes these body protein for us, which are very, very important. And they're essential for life, hence essential amino acids, which means that our bodies can't produce those amino acids. So they have to come from an exogenous source, whether that be diet, you know, meats, fish, things like that, or powders. Powders have made it very convenient, along with bars and RTDs, for people to get, especially athletes, more protein into their diet, which again is extraordinarily important if you're trying to build muscle and peak athletically. Um, now, the kinds of proteins, as we mentioned, are ready to drinks, RTDs, bars, like protein bars, and powders. Um, today we're going to focus mainly on powders, but real quick on bars and RTDs, they're very convenient. They tend not to be as high quality in terms of the protein and some of the other stuff added to it as a powder. Um, and that's because they have to be maintained fresh and things like that. Uh, for more information on those, if you go to the bar and RTD page, we have a video up there to find more details about that. Now, the powders, which also includes weight gainers, those are the calorie-dense shakes, you're talking about the highest quality that's going to be available in terms of a supplement. And when we talk about them, there's different types of protein that's in them. You know, we have whey protein, we have egg protein, we have casein protein, soy protein, pea protein, you know, other vegan and vegetarian sources of protein which have improved a lot lately. Um, each one has their strengths and weaknesses, so specifically the whey protein. Whey protein is a faster absorbing protein. It can be used throughout the day. Um, it's oftentimes found in post-workout drinks because it's very fast absorbing, hits your system very quick, it's very rich in branched chain amino acids, which are extremely important because over about a third of your muscle tissue is made of those three amino acids. Um, another protein that's common is egg protein. Egg used to be a lot more popular when powders first came out. Egg still has a very good amino acid profile. The main concern with egg is that some people tend to have an allergy to it, so sometimes people tend to avoid it. But egg is also a good protein that's available in powder with a very good amino acid profile, which is good for building muscle. Next is casein protein. You see casein a lot. Casein is a uh, milk protein. Milk protein is 80% casein, 20% whey when we're talking about bovine milk. Um, casein is also rich in BCAAs, but it tends to absorb a little slower. So you won't see it too often in a post-workout shake unless it's a hydrolyzed casein, which then changes the character of the protein. It's going to absorb a lot faster, so, and that's when you want those amino acids into your system quickly as post-workout. So casein is pretty versatile, just wouldn't recommend it immediately following a workout. It would be better than nothing, but ideally you'd go with something a little faster absorbing, either a hydrolyzed form or the whey. Um, next are the vegetarian or vegan ones, which we're talking about like soy, rice, and pea. And as I mentioned, those have improved a lot lately, not only in terms of taste, but they've made those into blended proteins, which happens a lot with like whey, egg, and casein as well, which are nice for throughout the day, because what you're talking about with blended proteins, whether they be the vegetarian or vegan ones with rice, pea, soy, or, you know, whey, egg, casein, is that you're getting a really strong amino acid profile because where one supplement, one particular protein type might be weak in a particular amino acid or two, another may be strong. So you're going to get a nice, rich blend of amino acids, you know, nicely distributed throughout. So that's where the protein blends tend to shine. And things to consider when you're looking at the specific types of protein is the processing. I'm not going to get too in-depth with that, but with whey proteins, you're talking about concentrates and isolates. Isolates are going to yield a higher percentage protein because we're isolating the protein. We're filtering out the fat and lactose. Um, with casein and all these proteins for that matter, you're talking about a bunch of micro fractions that come together to make that protein. For instance, with casein, micellar casein is actual full whole casein protein. Whereas some pro companies you'll see they'll just be alpha and beta casein or caseinates on the actual label. That's not a true casein. That's only part of it. So that's something else to consider when you look at your protein. Just look at how it's processed. Read it, see if it's an isolated protein or a concentrated protein. And even within those processing, there's different types. Within isolates, there's ion exchange, which exploits charges, and cross flow microfiltrations. Again, each has its strength. You know, cross flow microfiltration being a little bit better than ion exchange because you're going to preserve some of the protein micro fractions. Uh, again, if you go to the specific products, you'll see we go a little bit more in depth on those sometimes when you see our reviews on there. 
we'll be able to get a little more in depth on those so you can learn more about those processing types. But just something to read. And one other type of processing you're seeing more and more now is hydrolyzed proteins. As I mentioned with casein, what they do is they pre-digest the protein, which means they basically break it down into smaller fractions, making it absorb faster into your system. You'll see it with whey and you'll see it with casein. And you're seeing it more and more. The one thing to understand with uh, hydrolyzing proteins is the degree of hydrolysis. No protein is hydrolyzed 100% because it makes it entirely too bitter. The one thing that hydro hydrolyzing a protein does without getting too in-depth, is it tends to A, speed up the absorption of it, but also it lowers the allergens. So if somebody's a little bit more susceptible to a protein allergy, such as a casein, you may be able to take a hydrolyzed casein. Other things to consider when you're looking at a protein are digestive concerns. As we mentioned, a whey protein isolate is going to filter out the fat and lactose. So if you're somebody who has an intolerance to lactose, you're going to be better off with a whey protein isolate as opposed to a concentrate, which doesn't have too much lactose in there, but if you're sensitive to it, it's something to consider. Um, another digestive concern or other concerns would be if you're, again, a vegetarian or vegan, you know, you, you may choose to go with like a soy or a pea protein, something like that or some kind of a blend. To get a better amino acid profile, we'd recommend a blend on those. Um, texture is something else to consider. With a whey protein, you're going to get a more liquidy type texture, you know, assuming we're mixing an equivalent amount of fluid, be it water or milk, than you would with, say, a casein protein, which is going to be a little more thick and shake-like consistency. Blended proteins vary, depending upon how much whey or casein is in there. And the vegetarian proteins, most of them tend to be a little bit more liquidy like whey. Again, you can adjust that by adding more water to it, assuming we're going to use water. Um, other things to consider are the calories and the amount of protein you get per serving. You know, with a weight gainer, yes, it's a protein powder, so something to consider is you want to look at, hey, how many grams of protein am I, am I getting per gram of carbohydrates? So, for instance, if you have a powder that gives you 80 grams of carbohydrates and 40 grams of protein per serving, that means you're getting 2 grams of carbohydrates for every 1 gram of protein. That's a pretty good ratio. You might read one that says you're getting you know, 200 grams of protein and 50 grams of carbo, or 200 grams of carbohydrates, excuse me, and 50 grams of protein. Well, now you're at a 4 to 1 ratio of carbohydrates to protein. So, not as much protein, and that's really what you're paying for when you're looking at these. Carbohydrates are cheap. They're easy to come by. It's the protein that you're paying for. So, if you ever want to know a quick, quick way to figure out how much protein you're getting for your money, just turn over the label, take the amount of grams of protein, and multiply that by the number of servings per container and say, hey, I'm getting X amount of grams of protein per container. Now, that's something you can use to compare pricing. Also, also consider the type of protein that's in there and how it's processed. That's going to vary a little bit. A whey protein isolate costs more than a whey protein concentrate. So that's another thing to consider. Um, again, the calories. Always look at the calories. See if there's fat and fiber. Sometimes companies add that to it. The fats tend to give it a little creamy, more rich type taste. Uh, more like it's mixed in milk, even if you mix it in water. Some of them are adding fiber to make it, you know, a little bit easier for you to digest in terms of digestive health, and it's going to make you feel a little bit more full because the fiber is going to kind of expand in your stomach and make you feel more full. Last thing is convenience. We touched on RTDs and bars, how they can be convenient because you take them with you. Well, powders can be equally convenient if you just bring something like a shaker bottle with you to work. You could either keep a container, and not all containers are these big things you can lug around. You know, there's smaller, like two pound containers, and even one pound ones that you can maybe keep in your desk at your office, or you work in the construction field, you can throw it in your truck. Or, you know, if you're somebody who likes to keep it at home in a cool, dry place, that's fine too. Just take your powder, and you can just simply add it into your shaker in the morning, and then have some cold water with you at some point during the day. Add your water, and you can shake it right up and drink it right there, and have an apple or some almonds, and you got yourself a really nice meal. So, shaker cup's a good investment. Most of them are like eight or nine bucks. They're really good in the dishwasher. This one in particular is nice because it doesn't leak. So powders can be really, really convenient. And as we discussed at the uh, top of the video, they're going to be the highest in terms of quality, you know, relative to bars and um, ready to drink. So you're going to get a little bit more bang for your buck. And they tend to be cheaper too per serving. So that's something else to consider. So again, if you want some specific uh, reviews, you can always read what other users are saying on the specific product page. Or we do have a lot of video reviews up on a lot of the specific products. If you have any questions on these or any other products specifically, go ahead and post them in the comments section of the video or on our blog. Also, you can find us on facebook.com slash bestpricenutrition. Thank you.